Hi everyone, it's John from What Up. Welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I'm taking all the little tidbits and news we've had over the last month, and I'm kind of cramming them together in this one video because they weren't quite big enough to warrant their own videos, but there is a few of them now, uh, so you know we can talk about them. It's going to be everything from an electronic trademark filing for the Wheel of Time all the way up to and including a possible restart date for the show, which I'm pretty excited and pumped about, and you guys should be too. Now, before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that May is Serge Weber Syndrome Awareness Month. All through the month of May in every one of my videos, I'm going to be doing a little blurb about Serge Weber at the beginning, uh, and I'm going to be asking my viewers to do one of two things. If you have a little bit of extra cash laying around, I don't have a Patreon, I don't have a store, I don't ask for any monetary support from my viewers. Uh, if you could take that little bit of money that you may have used to support me uh, and put it to a donation to the foundation, that would be fantastic. There is a link in the description box down below. Please click on that. If you have the money to do so, donate to this wonderful organization. In the box where it says, where have you heard from us? Uh, just type in what up. That way at the end of the month, I can talk to uh, the foundation and they can let me know uh, how much the channel uh, viewers, you folks, have raised. Um, and then I'll let you all know uh, at the beginning of June. Also, I know right now with the state of the world, not everyone is working, not everyone has extra money, and that's that's 100% okay. Uh, be, as, be it as it, it's an awareness month, uh, I've also left a link down below to the foundation's website. You can click on that and educate yourselves about what Sturge Weber syndrome really is. My uh, second oldest daughter, Jasmine, was born with type 1 Sturge Weber syndrome, uh, and every little bit of education uh, and awareness counts in the public because we would not have known she had Sturge Weber syndrome unless we had a specific specialist actually take a look at a couple of pictures of her daughter, uh, which was crazy, and uh, they referred us to the right doctors in order to get the diagnosis and the proper treatment. So, if you can, donate. If you can't, please uh, promote a little bit of awareness, read a little bit about it, uh, share the Foundation's page around so other people can see uh, exactly what the syndrome is and what the Foundation's all about. All right, thanks for that. Now, at the end of this video, I'm also featuring Matt Wolf. He is an actor as well as... He does all kinds of stuff, really, uh, but he is heavily involved in the Twitter of Time community. Uh, at Malkier's King is his handle, and uh, we're going to talk about quite a few of the things that he's done for the Wheel of Time community and with the Wheel of Time community over the years. All right, so before we get started, spoiler warning. In this video, we're going to be talking about a little bit of news uh, that's going to center around the first season of the Wheel of Time show. So if you haven't read at least New Spring and The Eye of the World, please be forewarned. I may spoil a few things from those books. Uh, I won't get into any specific plot points or any of the overarching story, but some of the scenes I may bring up. So if you haven't read those two books, you've been cautioned. All right, let's get on to the video. First off, I want to start by saying that a lot of this information can be found on wheelotimeseries.com. It is a fantastic website. Uh, the people that run it over there keep up to date on a lot of the big and small news when it comes to Wheel of Time, uh, so please go check them out. I've left a link to their website down in the description box down below. Now, first thing we're going to talk about is Sally Richardson Whitfield. She is the director for episodes 5 and 6, and she gave a two-minute snippet about the Wheel of Time during a recent Instagram interview that she gave. Now, she didn't say a whole lot, but she said a whole lot, if that makes any sense. Um, she was hesitant to say what the name of the project was. In fact, I don't believe she actually did say what the project was. She was told, uh, she told the interviewer she wasn't allowed to say. But she said Rosamund Pike was a league, and... We know that she's directing a couple episodes of Wheel of Time, uh, and during the interview she said, I'm directing two episodes of the show, Roseman Pike is a league, it's it's it, a lead, it's the Wheel of Time. So, uh, we know for sure what she's talking about. Uh, and then she also goes on to say it's a huge sci-fi fantasy epic that spans 15 books. So, Wheel of Time's a fantasy, uh, it could be considered a little bit of sci-fi-ish too, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Um, and 15 books, yeah, 14 books in a prequel, that's 15 books. So, it's Wheel of Time. Now... Let's get on to some of the things that she mentioned during the interview. If you want to watch that interview, I've left a link to it down below in the description box. Like I said, it's just a two-minute snippet that deals with Wheel of Time. Um, the first thing she said was that she was there for about four months. Two months of it was prep. And during that prep, she helped scout locations. Uh, she helped look for cast. Um, she helped with costuming. She helped with props. Uh, things like that. Things that a normal director for an episode would do. And it kind of sounds like Rafe is giving his directors a lot of free reign when it comes to directing their episodes, which I'm really happy with because um, micromanagement tends to, uh, except I guess in the case of the Marvel movies, usually blow up in a showrunner's face. Um, but these are all fantastic directors they have and to let them have a little bit of free reign uh, is great. 
Um, she also mentioned that she had three or four scenes where she had 300 plus people on the screen. And those 300 plus people included carts, carriages, wagons, horses, and lots of people. So that gives us our first clue as to where in the story we're at. The second clue is she had a lot of input on a new fantasy-esque type character. Um, and to me, that doesn't mean that they're going to have a brand new character that's not on the Wheel of Time that is a fantasy-esque character showing up. Um, it means that it's probably new to the first season. Like So they're introducing a character. Um, and there's two options that I think of for this. The first option would be Loyal. So we're looking at episodes 5 and 6. It's quite possible 5 and 6 puts us in Camelin, depending on whose timeline you're going by. Now, I was a big proponent for two books one season for a very long time. Um, Matt, the innkeeper over at the Dusty Wheel, and Rebecca from Reading the Pattern both changed my mind. I'm now kind of thinking it'll be the first full book and part of the Great Hunt in this. So, saying that, episodes 5 and 6 could see us in Camelot, um, where we meet Loyal. Now, Loyal is a fantasy-esque type character. Uh, we quite don't quite know how they're going to handle that. Um, it, prosthetics for sure, maybe a little bit of CG, uh, but way more fantasy looking than say a normal person uh, and she had some input in that so that's the first thing that coupled with the fact that there's large crowds the second thing this could also put us in faldera at the end of uh book one ish depending on um you know the timelines and what they're going by we can't even go by episode titles anymore because it's pretty much been said that they don't necessarily reflect spots in the books uh, as much as we would think so it could be Faldera, and that fantasy-esque character could be, you know, the Nim, the Green Man. Um, again, another character that will probably have a lot of CG and prosthetic components to them, so they are a fantasy-esque type character. So, gives us a little bit more information on where in the series she could be directing those two episodes. Uh, she also said that she had a great time with it, um, and the last bit of uh, big news that she dropped was that a normal TV show usually runs seven to nine days filming per episode, um, and Wheel of Time was running 15 to 20 days per episode, uh, which, that's awesome. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the more time they're taking with it, uh, the better the final finished product would be. It shows that they're not rushing it. It shows that they're not trying to just put it out to get the money. Uh, they want to take their time and make it right, or as right as it can be, which I'm pretty happy about. All right, let's get on to the next piece of news. So the next bit of news we have is Rafe crashed the Jordan Con line panel. Now, I was very fortunate to be a guest in the Dusty Wheel leading up to the con. Uh, I was not part of the con itself. Uh, however, Matt from the Dusty Wheel was on... You know, he was right involved, and he was in this panel, and I got to talk to Matt a little bit, and I also watched the panel, as I'm sure many of you did, and Rafe crashed it, and I'm, I'm using quotations there because they obviously knew he was coming. <laughs> Someone like that just doesn't go, ah, I'm going to show up. Um, but when he was talking to them, he did basically announce all kinds of brand new information that was really relevant to the show. First thing was, is that he said, as a showrunner, it's his job to protect the heart and spine of the show. Um... Which is pretty telling because we all know there are probably a thousand external pressures on him to make the show to a certain budgetary constraint and timings and things like that uh, and to cut certain things that may not be uh, as pertinent to people who haven't read the books that want to watch the shows. Uh, he said it's his job to protect the heart and spine. So that tells me that he is, uh, as a fan, because we all know that Rafe Judkins is a fan of the Wheel Time series, doing everything he can to make it as good a series uh, and as true to the books as is humanly possible. Now I know there are some Wheel of Time purists out there, and you know who you are, that want to see a direct port. They want to see a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the books. I've said it from day one, that can't happen, uh, mainly because it wouldn't translate well to the small screen. Uh, the way Robert Jordan wrote with all the inner monologues and a lot of description and stuff like that uh, doesn't really, you know, you can't really take that and just port it into a television script. It's got to, There has to be some changes made, um, and we know that that's going to happen. But we know that Rafe is there fighting for uh, other Wheel of Time fans and doing everything he can to make sure the show is as good as it can be. As we all know, there, there can't be any perfect Wheel of Time show because my perfect Wheel of Time show is different than every one of you watching. So um, he will do his best. Now, he also confirmed there's eight episodes in the first season. And we kind of had confirmation of that. There was a lot of leaks at the eight episodes. There was a lot of speculation. But Amazon never came right out and said, 100% eight episodes, but Rafe 
did say it. So we know there's eight episodes, six of which we know the titles of, um, but we don't know exactly where they're going to finish or what they're doing with the final two. And I think that's probably why they're holding those titles back, because that'll give us a very good idea of where the first season will end. Um, he also did mention that the, the cast bonded quite a lot when they were on set because they all went to the same gym. Um, which, you know, that's pretty cool. If you're all going to the same gym to keep up your level of fitness uh, and helping each other out there, it, it you know, ports over into your real life. Uh, I do that a lot at work with people I work with. We all go to the same gym. Uh, and, you know, it's really great to hear that. He also did give a little story, which is kind of funny. Uh, they were filming a scene with Egwene and, and Nynaeve and... The three boys, uh, Matt, Perrin, and Rand, all rented a car behind everyone's backs and kind of like took off on their own. And he saw them on his way to his trailer and he actually saw Matt hiding in the back seat, which is purely in character for Matt. So Bernie Harris, he's probably doing a fantastic job. Um, I don't know if he's a method actor staying in method, staying as Matt the whole time or that's just his personality, but it sounds a lot like Matt to me. The final thing that he had mentioned that was uh, of note was the fact that um, when the book series first came out in the early 90s, it was very progressive and very ahead of its time in certain things. So certain things in the books would seem very feminist at the time or very forward thinking um, that are normal to us nowadays. So Robert Jordan was very far ahead of his time. Uh, and the book series was not necessarily about men versus women, uh, but it was more about genders. And um, he said that they're going to keep that theme in the show. However, uh, he, they're also going to update it a bit so it's a bit more palatable to modern audiences so in the 90s maybe certain things were uh, a little oh that's kind of uh you know a little out there at the time uh, they're going to do the same thing here they're going to keep things progressive and modern and they're going to update the uh, uh the theme of the show that way which i think is a fantastic thing now when robert jordan wrote these books um he was far ahead of his time for the early 90s and some of the the things he tackled and in the way he tackled a lot of the subjects in his books uh, he did not draw attention or make a big deal about certain things that at the time were kind of a big deal uh, he just kind of said this is how it is and he kept writing as if it was no big deal which is in today's modern society a lot of those things they are no big deal it's just just how things are um, and so they're going to do that same thing where we're going to see scenes or see uh, uh, themes in the, in the show that may go hmm and they may 10 or 15 years from now become absolutely normal or you won't even think about them a second time you know what i mean all right so that's what i have there for for rafe's panel uh it was really cool to watch if you didn't get to see it live uh it is still up there you can still watch it uh it was it was really fantastic it was nice to see his interaction with the community all right let's get on to the next bit of news so now we have a electronic trademark that's been filed for the Wheel of Time that protects the logo and the name Wheel of Time. Now, that may not seem like a huge piece of news to some of you, but to me, I'm, I'm a kind of a gamer. Uh, I have been for years and years and years. Uh, this is massive. So this could mean anything from, you know, mobile games on your phone all the way up to and including uh, console or um, actual PC games. Uh, for the Wheel of Time, which is super exciting because when you think of a, a game when it comes to Wheel of Time, everybody thinks back to that first-person shooter-esque game that came out in, the, I believe, the late 90s. It's not a bad game, but it certainly doesn't hold up by any stretch of the imagination. It's like playing Wolfenstein 3D in today's, you know, it, it just doesn't hold up. Um, but this means that when the show does come out and it gets really big, the logos and the name are trademarked, so that, that means that they're protected, so not everyone and their dog can make all these knockoff crappy games and just flood the stores with them. Um, it's still going to happen. You see all these Game of Thrones games. Not all of them are 100% trademarked or, or dealt with through the, the Game of Thrones show, but this will help some, and it also means that they probably plan on doing something with it, which is big, big news. Now, I personally would love to see something like an MMO uh, or maybe a, a console game, but I'd be quite happy with anything, including even a Wheel of Time card game on my phone, to be quite honest with you. Um, it would be fantastic to see. So we know that there are filed trademarks for that, so we know that eventually we're going to start seeing more and more Wheel of Time merch coming out when the show gets closer and when it opens up, and games are going to be part of that, which is pretty exciting. Now, I have two, or well, really one final piece of news for uh, for you guys today, and that is Bleeding Cool and Variety are both reporting that uh, a lot of productions in the Czech Republic are set to start again. So, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Carnival Row, among some other shows, are all set up to start filming again. They're not actually filming yet, but the Czech Republic is ready for them to come back. They've eased restrictions, and they said, you can come back and start filming your shows again. Um... Amazon and some other people have admitted that Wheel of Time is a little bit further out, uh, so uh, they, we won't see them starting probably back up in June or July like some of these other shows are 
being reported that they're going to start then. However, there is hope that we may see some more filming this year for Wheel of Time. Now, we all know that uh, Rafe has talked about this a couple of times, that during the uh, you know the stay-at-home staycation that we're all having right now, he's had the opportunity to watch multiple episodes of The Wheel of Time so far, and he is super pumped about it, uh, and he's really excited, and he couldn't wait to watch each episode one after another. Um, so I'm excited for them to get back filming so they can finish the first season so we can see it for 2021 release. Um, they've announced that it will be out in 2021 a number of times, not officially, but a number of uh, news articles and uh, the actors and actresses have said that it will be out in 2021. I believe um, Alvaro Morte just said that in an interview that uh, the show coming out in 2021, but we don't know when. Uh, my money would have been on very early 2021 before all of this happened, but now we might be have we might have to wait a little bit later, but I'm fine with that as long as the production value and everything is there and it's polished and it looks very nice and it's true to the story, at, at least as much as it can be, I'm happy to wait as long as possible. I mean, I've waited 30 years. What's another one at this point, right? All right. So I want to thank you all for sticking with me for all the news that I had for you today. Uh, if you have any comments at all, please leave them down below in the comment section. Let me know if you like this video, if you like what I'm doing here. Um, and I do want to let you guys know that I am still running a contest for a What Up t-shirt and a What Upper bottle. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel because at 2,500 subscribers, I will be giving them away and I will do it probably during uh, a live stream or a, a bigger video that I'll put out that week. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, and leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. All right, let's get on to the community section. Hi everyone, welcome to the community section. Today I'm featuring at Malkir's King, Alan Mandragoran himself. So, uh, Matt Wolf is an actor and he has been a big part of the real-time community for a very long time. He RP'd online exclusively from 99 to 01 and they became the basis for a lot of the stories that he wrote, um, which I've linked a few of his things down below in the description box. So he's done a number of different things. He has a YouTube channel uh, and the most... Um, Probably awesome uh, part of his YouTube channel is the How Not to Get Killed series. <laughs> so he is uh, he plays Lan and he he does does some things in the videos. It's really cool. There's also uh, one of his RP stories was the basis for a fan film called The Shattered Harp, and that is also the trailer and whatnot is on his his YouTube channel. So I've left links to some of the RP stories he has, some of his YouTube videos down below, as well as his Venmo channel where um, he talks about. Now I'm gonna have to read this because I am absolutely terrible at remembering things and now i have to find it um the email channel where uh, he is binding the shattered harp trailer uh and a few wheel time monologues so uh matt wolf is is massive on twitter i've left his twitter down below if you haven't already followed him on twitter uh, if you're not part of twitter time please do so uh, just search the hashtag twitter of time and you'll find thousands of us there there are a lot of us on twitter and we have our own little community off in the corner of twitter away from some of the you know the nastier elements and uh, we all support each other and it's really great so if, if you have twitter come join us there and and follow at melkir's king and also take a look at his channel and some of the rp stuff he has out too it's really fantastic all right um the last thing i want to mention is i've left a link to matt's website down below if you are producing a uh, a television show or commercials or anything like that matt is an actor and he's a very good one at that um please go to his website his cv is there among some other things and you can take a look at his work and uh maybe you can give him uh, a shout out now the last thing i'll say here is rafe hire the man <laughs> put him in as something he can't play land because land's already been cast by the amazing daniel henny however uh, you can definitely have him in as a warder or a soldier uh, or even a random villager number three shoveling hay. I'm sure Matt would love that just to be part of the show. All right. Thank you all so much for sticking with me here to the end of the video. Uh, just remember to uh, click the links to the Serge Weber Foundation down below and learn a little bit more about Serge Weber Syndrome. Uh, or if you can support the foundation, make a donation and make sure you put what up in there is where you heard him from. All right. Thank you so much. And here's to many more.